Here we go. Holy cow. Have you guys seen the announcements? Have you been out there? Have you heard about Microsoft Fabric? Woo! I was blown away when I saw this come out. Oh, I can't wait to get into this for you. I'm going to show it to you in just a second. All right. If you're looking for the best freaking content on Microsoft Fabric, this new platform that's out there, you got to tune into this channel. This Jamoke over here, he's going to tell you all about it. So you make sure that you've liked, you subscribe, you share this with the people at your work. All right. I want this forwarded. I want to see comments down below. I want to see thumbs up and you turn on that alarm bell so you don't miss any notifications. All right. Okay. Are we good? Fine. I'm out of here. I'm done. Ugh. Okay. So let's go back to the crazy days of 1983. Many of you who may be watching this might not even be born yet. In 83, I think I was seven years old when this happened. Uh, but that's when Microsoft released Word, right? It was Word editor could, could go in, type up documents. It was, it was fantastic, right? Shortly after, in 1985, they released Excel, then came out PowerPoint. And at that time, all of the software was purchased separately. You know, it was all available, but it was all separate things, separate products that were out. Then in 1988, Microsoft combined them all into Microsoft's office suite of tools to, to make sure that everyone who worked with a personal computer had all of the productivity tools that they needed available at their fingertips to do the work that, that they needed to do, right? So, and Microsoft eventually added in Outlook and Access, and as years went by, the Access patterns for how you'd, you would come in and start to work with with, uh, with these productivity tools really started to change. And, and as more and more people began to work in Microsoft Office, uh, because they're all together and they all worked really well together, people stopped using their Lotus Notes. They stopped using Lotus 1, 2, 3, or their other personal productivity software that were out there. Until now, uh, Microsoft Office is the predominant uh, Office productivity suite. Well, fast forward a little bit, <laughs> a little ways, and in 2015, Microsoft releases Power BI. Power BI... We know it. We love it. Great. This BI tool you can work and drag drop and, and use and share stuff around. It's fantastic, right? Big fan, right? That same year in 2015, Microsoft released Azure Data Factory, okay? That was your first like cloud-based ETL tool to move data out from uh, various places in the cloud out into storage locations out inside of like Azure SQL. Uh, and shortly thereafter in Azure SQL DW, that got released in 2016 as well. At the same time, Power BI and Data Factory were being released though in 2015, Microsoft released uh, Azure ML for the data scientists that were starting to use these new cloud-based tools to perform machine learning and start to get more insights and predictability of what's going on inside of their data. Well, these tools continue to evolve and eventually, you know, the SQL DW stuff, the, the data factory, all of that stuff was brought together inside of Synapse, made it much easier for people who are working in the data engineering space to work together, to share information and share content. It was all well good, right? We really liked that. That went that went fairly well. Uh, but there are still these distinct worlds. There was uh, the work that our data engineer friends were doing in Synapse. There was the work our data analyst friends were doing inside of Power BI. And there was this work that our data scientist friends were doing inside of Azure ML. Well, that continued on for, for, for a little while. And, and these disparate work forces started to run into some challenges, right? Uh, namely, the peop the data engineers need to know much more about what data analysts were doing and, and you know, in, in to ensure that the data they were providing them lined up, made sense, and worked right. Same thing was true of data scientists. They were off on their islands doing the work that, you know, that they had to, as well, as data scientists, but 
their work would be trapped over in the in notebooks and in data science land that was completely detached from anything data engineering and data analysts were doing. And I mean, they could get it, but it was it wasn't directly integrated. That was a huge problem. Well, uh, as these things started to go and as people started to work in this framework, they realized, you know what? None of this is ideal. That's when, you know, because we need to do something foundationally to bring these, uh, these three spaces together. Enter the lake house, right? The concept of not just having uh, uh, this broad data lake that are, that's suitable for data scientists and for data engineers, uh, but also included uh, a data warehouse component that allowed for that dependable, reliable, uh, performance and you know, repeatable analytics that companies know and analysts really need in order to, to do their work. Well, that's all well and good. That addressed the storage layer issue, but it didn't address where people were working and operating. If you're a data engineer, you would go into a set of tools over in uh, Synapse or Databricks or uh, wherever you happen to be, and you do your work. And if you're in Power BI, you go into Power BI and you go and you do your work inside of Power BI. And if you're a data scientist, you went and did your stuff all over and separate. Well, that created all sorts of problems with disconnects and uh, like on the data science side, like this has been a big one for a long time. Like huge insights are built and found in data science, but then like throwing that over to data engineering to be able to fit it into a flow that your analysts can use Sometimes that legitimately took nine to 18 months or longer in order to deliver that value. Now, that that created a huge drop in the ROI of all of our work that our friends in data science were doing, right? That's a huge problem. Well, enter Microsoft Fabric. Fabric, a single pane of glass that allows data engineers, data analysts, and data scientists to work, work together all in the same ecosystem, all integrated and working together with, with low code, no code, front end tooling, as well as that pro integration back end uh, stack that you've all, that they've known and loved for the last nearly a decade. So you have both freight, everyone can now work together using all of the tools that we've been using for a long time either through the easy low code, no code path or through your pro dev tools. This change in our ability to use and work together when it comes to data is gonna really transform the way we work and operate. Because we also know if you're a data engineer, sometimes you need to do some data analysis, right? Like are your data loads loading? Are they running? What's the quality of the, your data? What's the you know, refresh cadence? What's failed? What's not? You need some reports. Get some reports out there. You know, you might also want to use some machine learning. Right? If you want to cleanse and, and clean your data, maybe you can use some really sophisticated ML models to come up with some, some cleansing patterns on your data side, right? Why wouldn't you want to use that on occasion? Same thing if you're a data analyst. Does your data engineering team really provide everything that you need? I mean, really? Really? Uh, I'm going to tell you, this not, and this is not a knock on data engineering. Data engineering is full up with work. We're hiring data engineers for years and years. There's tons of it. But there's always going to be more work for data engineering or data analysts or data scientists than they could ever do. What this does is it says, hey, data analyst, our data engineering team is loading stuff and bringing stuff in, here's our patterns. That data analyst can say, you know what, I can, I can do some lightweight stuff like that too to kind of get something up and running. I can build out a flow. I can build out a data pipeline. I can build that into my model and into my environment so I can do more and I can start to deliver value today while my requests sit in the backlog of data engineering to you know be worked on in a month, six months, 18 months, or, and importantly, 
maybe the data team never, ever, ever, ever finds it a priority to work on that. That's perfectly fine. And that's the true value that we talk about with Microsoft Fabric. Okay, here is where Microsoft Fabric comes into play. Inside of one environment, we bring together all of the tools you need to work and operate together. We've got your Azure Data Factory that's been around since 2015. Synapse Data Engineering. This brings together your Spark Notebooks, your, your Lakehouse capabilities. Snaps Data Warehouse, so that if you you know you need to just have your classic data warehouse, it's there. Better inside of Synapse, they've merged dedicated Snaps Data Warehouse with serverless, so you only have one product. Now you just tune it, and you're ready to go. They also have Synapse Data Science, where they bring together all those capabilities you're looking for as a data scientist. You know, building models, running experiments. All those capabilities are brought together. Then we've got Synapse Real-Time Analytics. What this does is it allows you to build out those pipelines to stream data in from all of your various feeds of information and be able to make them accessible to uh, engineering, data science, or analytics together. Then we have Power BI. This is the same Power BI you know and love, but wait, it has been the entire tabular engine has been rewritten so it can go directly against the data lake at the exact same performance and capabilities of in-memory Power BI. Wow. And then the, the most recent update to the entire platform is Data Activator. This is going to be coming out soon. What this does is it makes it really easy for anyone, and I mean anyone, to automate that next step, that action that you take. Once, you, once some data has come in, you can then do something. It is unbelievably awesome and it's integrated broadly across Microsoft Fabric. And all of this, and this is really key. I, I, honestly, I think this is the biggest thing that's out there. Shout out to Josh Kaplan. <laughs> He's the product manager on this. Uh, one Lake is a, a singular place for all of the data that exists in your company so you can easily share that data, be it if you're data engineering, data science, analytics, an office worker, someone using OneDrive. You have one, one lake available for every customer. All of this is out now. So what do you think? bringing all the data tools together in the same way Microsoft brought all of the, the personal productivity tools together. Do you think that's a great idea? Are you on the same page as me where you think this is going to change the world and how we work in, together with data? Because I cannot wait to see how we can better work and operate together when everyone has access to the same power, the same capabilities. They're using the same data on the same toolings to find insights that are available and just just out there within reach. Ah, oh, I am so excited for what this means to the future of data. Can you feel the excitement? I can. I want to know what you think about this. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think this is silly? Do you think this is just bunk or bad, some other thing? I want to know what your thoughts are. Leave comments down below or keep the conversation going on social media. You can find me on Kratos BI at, link, uh, at twitter.com or you can find me out on LinkedIn as Chris Wagner. Uh, any of those places you, you can reach out to me. Do make sure you've hit like, subscribe, and leave comments and all that stuff. It really helps with the logarithm. It's very important. Uh, don't make me sick less on you. He 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 gets really into it. Oh, where'd Dax go? Well, Dax is excited about this too. I can tell you he's excited. I don't know where he is, but he's, he, he's excited about it. All right. Thank you guys oh so very much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. You have a great day. Peace.
Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.